Hey, what's up guys? Flick here. Welcome back to another episode of the Wolves Career Mode. This is Season 1, Episode 10, and this episode will be recorded live. You might have seen the last episode where I record the gameplay and talked over it live. This one, it's a little bit different. We're doing everything live commentary like you might be more used to. So it should be a good episode because we are just sitting one point behind Redding for that top spot in the championship. We did play Redding in the last episode. We did beat them, but unfortunately, because we drew a few other matches, we were unable to surpass them for that top spot. We'll see if we can do that in today's episode, but we'll take a look at our opponents and see what we have matched up against. We do have Birmingham City, an away match to start things off on the 2nd of December. On the 9th, we have Sunderland at home, and then on the 16th, we have Sheffield Wednesday away. I will be playing all three of these matches, and then I think the following episode will close out the month of December, which will put us nicely into the January transfer window. So keep your eye out on the next episode. Just think it a little bit in advance because I'll be asking for some player suggestions from you guys. We tried out something a little different in the last episode, Squad Report, and I talked about the players that saw growth in the last month in detail and passed over the players that didn't see any growth. And you guys seem to like that system, so I'm going to continue with that moving forward. And the first player that did see growth this month was Norris. He's gone up plus one to his aggression and plus one to his goalkeeper handling. Doherty has gone up plus one to his dribbling, plus one to his marking, and plus one to his long shots. Afosu Aie going up plus one to his agility, plus one to his crossing, and plus one to his heading accuracy. Cody going up plus one to his sprint speed, plus one to his reactions, plus one to his long passing, and plus one to his short passing. Ebanks Lendell is a player that is on loan, but he got a massive boost in some of his individual attributes over the last month. I'm not sure why that is, whether it's a glitch system or just set months. Uh, these loan players just see growth, but regardless, we'll take it. And he did go up plus one to his acceleration, plus one to his strength, plus one to his reactions, plus one to his interceptions, plus one to his ball control, plus one to his short passing, plus one to his long shots, plus two to his slide tackle, plus one to his volleys, and plus one to his curve. Bully has gone up plus one to his ball control, plus one to his free kick accuracy, and plus one to his heading accuracy. Bennett also saw a little bit of growth going up plus one to his heading accuracy and plus one to his shot power. Miranda going up plus one to his sprint speed, plus one to his reactions, also plus one to his short passing, plus one to his volleys. Courtney House, I stressed it a lot in the last episode how great of a player he's been for us and what kind of player I think he can be in the future. And he continued his growth this month, going up plus one in his overall rating, plus two to his sprint speed, uh, plus two to his interceptions, excuse me, plus one to his marking, plus one to his long shots, plus three to his stand tackle, and plus one to his slide tackle. Danny Bath also surprisingly saw a bit of growth in his overall rating, going up plus one. Individually, he saw a plus one to his strength, plus one to his finishing, and plus one to his short passing. Delon's going up plus one to his composure, plus one to his marking plus one to his slide tackle. And last we have Vinagre who went plus one to his sprint speed, plus one to his agility, and plus one to his interceptions. Moving on to the midfielders, we'll begin with Saiz who saw plus one to his interceptions, plus one to his free kick accuracy. And Daye got plus one to his aggression, plus one to his ball control, plus one to his long shots. Nevish going up plus one to his strength, plus one to his vision, plus one to his short passing, plus one to his shot power. Marshall going up plus one to his long passing. Jero going up plus one to his heading accuracy and plus one to his short passing. Gibbs Light, another one of our young players who has been growing very well for us, going up plus one to his attacking positioning, plus three to his vision, plus one to his dribbling, plus three to his finishing, plus three to his long pass, plus three to his stand tackle, plus one to his slide tackle, and plus one to his volleys. The last midfielder that we'll be talking about is Connor Ronan, going up plus two to his acceleration, plus one to his composure, plus one to his ball control, and plus one to his volleys. Podanes will start things off for our attackers. He went up plus one in his overall rating, going up plus one to his stamina, plus one to his strength, plus three to his attacking positioning, plus two to his finishing, plus one to his heading accuracy, plus three to his shot power, and plus one to his long shots. And a Bakari going up plus two to his attacking positioning, plus one to his dribbling, plus three to his finishing, plus two to his heading accuracy, and plus one to his shot power. Elder Costa, who just returned from injury, actually saw some growth in the last month. He went up plus one to his acceleration, which is awesome because out of all the attributes, I'd like to see the physical stats grow, even though he's pretty well suited already. Wilson is another player that saw some growth, going up plus one to his stamina, plus one to his ball control, plus one to his finishing, and plus one to his curve. 
Bonatini had a fantastic episode in the last one uh, where he scored a lot of goals. And he went up plus one in his overall rating compared to the last month, going up plus one to his sprint speed, plus one to his strength, plus one to his heading accuracy, plus one to his long shots, and plus one to his curve. A phobie going up plus one in his acceleration, plus one in his reactions, plus one to his marking, plus one to his long shots, and plus one to his volleys. Now we'll move all the way down to our left wingers. We have Cavalero going up plus one to his dribbling and plus one to his stand tackle. And finally, we have Jota who went up plus one to his acceleration, plus one to his aggression, plus one to his ball control, plus one to his finishing, and plus one to his heading accuracy. We'll also do a quick update on our youth squad. Uba is one of our new goalkeepers that we scattered out from Nigeria. His overall has gone from a 51 to 59 range, now it's to a 60. So he looks to be a very good keeper and likely the top candidate so far for that goalkeeper position. His potential has also gone from a 76 to 94, now to a 79 to 94. Fodio is another one of those Nigerian goalkeepers that we scouted. His overall went from a 45 to 61, now sitting at a 52, potential going from 70 to 94 to 75 to 94. So out of those two, Uba definitely looks to be the better talent. Rui Faria is another one of our players that we've had for quite some time. And he actually didn't see any change in the last month. His overall staying at 56, his potential staying at 77 to 94. Guillerme Noronha, his overall went from a 56 to a 57. His potential changing from 72 to 90 to 76 to 90. Felix Meyer, his overall stayed the same at 59, but his potential did go up slightly, going from an 85 to 94 to an 86 to 94. Daniel Amaral is the last of the players. His overall stayed the same at 63, but his potential changed from a 79 to 93 now to an 80 to 90. One thing that I forgot to mention at the start of the squad report is that as of the latest title update, there have been some new player portraits added to career mode as well as some of the other game modes in FIFA. And a lot of these Wolves players actually did get updated with new 2D player portraits. And for me, these small additions to career mode make all the difference. For an offline game mode, you really appreciate this sort of stuff. At least I do personally. Let me know what you guys think of some of these player updates. But I would say about 75% of the squad got new uh, player portraits. And it's just amazing what small details can do for your enjoyment of the game mode. In career mode, you know you have to update the lineup so much and you see these player faces so often that the small addition really increases my enjoyment of the game. We'll take a look at the league table heading into our match against Birmingham City. They sit just outside the top sixth in seventh. Definitely a quality side, so we'll need to play well if we do want to pick up the result. One thing that I noticed from our match against Chelsea is that blue kit and our black kit does not go very well together. There was a bit of a kit clash in the last episode and I want to avoid that, so I'll be wearing our home kit for this fixture kind of unusual but I think it's important that I can focus on the game and you guys can have a good viewing experience but we have a very well rested team going into this match and a strong one at that Costa has performed well coming back from his injury we'll see if we can keep it going against Birmingham City an interesting formation choice from Birmingham City. They're also rocking the 4-2-3-1. And one thing that I found for the last episode is that it's pretty tough to break down that formation with the legendary difficulty and the sliders that we're using. This could be a chance for Birmingham City. Gallagher's away. We have Bully trying to stick a leg out, and he does well to defend that. Only a quarter kick now, and these can be dangerous. We have the number eight, Nevish, marking the shot. Why is there an open player? And we just seem to fall down. I was talking about the danger of these set pieces and corner kicks. Of course, Birmingham City is scoring their first chance. Looking at the replay, it's almost as if our players collided into each other. That's a tough break. There's Podanes. He's going to look to shoot. Decent effort, and Kushak making the save. We'll try the short corner kick tactic. It worked well for us in the last episode. And a heel to heel flick to set up some space. Couple of ball rolls, now playing in the middle. This is in Dye. Finding Nevish. Still on the ball, he needs an option, does the fancy pass, still on side. This is Jota in the middle, another ball! Oh, that's too much, come on. Good interception from Vinagre. We have a couple players here on the left. This is Podanes making a run and a nice ball from Costa to find him. Do the Berber spin inside, looking for Phoebe. Morrison took a deflection, Jota might still have the effort. That should be a tap in, and it's going to be 1-1. One, one. Costa. Gets his first goal back, I believe, after returning from injury and a great time for us to do so as well. 20 minutes into the match, we were unlucky to concede our first goal, but we get a little bit of luck going our way with that deflection and the rebound goal goes to us. 
Phoebe might be through here. Podane's playing him through. We're going to go with the crossbody effort. I thought I may have taken too many touches, but Afobi with that low driven shot, it's just too effective in FIFA 18. And he gets himself another goal. We're sitting in a really good spot now with the lead. And I want to keep that going. Let's get a third. Are you kidding? The looping header goes in for Birmingham City. They are just the master of these set pieces. First they score from a corner kick, and now they score from a cross. Not much that Ruddy could have done about that. It's just one of those headers that are bound to go in. Oh, Phoebe might be able to get another goal for us, and it's three. Five goals in the first 38 minutes. What is this match? It's just going to be a goal, uh, goal fest. Whoever scores the most goals is going to win this one. Obviously, that's that's a, uh, a kind of a no-brainer, but it's one of those matches. I think you guys know what I mean. The thing I'll be watching out for is those set pieces. I do not want to give Birmingham City any free goals, so I'll try to avoid the fouls. Just one change at the break. I'm going to take Jota off and bring on Connor Ronan. I've just been liking how he's been playing lately, so I want to give him some playtime. Nice run being made on the right by our fullback. Doherty holding it up, now finding Ronan on the... Overlap. We'll see if we can find the cross inside. Holding it up. Finding a phobie in the middle. One more pass. We'll find Podanes. Some great play. And it just needed to be the finish. Should we have gone with the finesse shot there? Maybe. We get a corner kick out of it. That's the kind of play that I want to be playing FIFA. Like That's my ideal play style. Just passing it around. Finding the open player. And we'll see if Connor Ronan can get a goal. We brought him on at halftime. He has a few options in the middle. He'll play it across. Kushak with the save. Gallagher making the run into space. We need to watch out for that cross. And the pass in the middle. Ruddy finally pulling off a save. Stepping up when we need him to. A rough start to the match, but he's playing a lot better. We'll look to close out this win with a few substitutions. Costa looking a bit tired, so we'll bring on Cavalero for him. And Bonatini has been scoring a lot of goals as of late. We could use one extra one just to seal the deal. So we'll bring Bonatini on at striker. Nice ball. Ronan gets taken out inside the box. Ref, how is that not a penalty? I felt like there was no contact with the ball. And it's a pretty clear cut pen. But 15 minutes left to play. I guess we can play defensive. I really do want that fourth goal though. And we might be able to get it here. Cavalero. Find the overlapping fullback. Vinagre playing it in the middle. This is Podanes to hold it up. Finding another pass. Now it's Leo Bonatini getting shrugged off by the Birmingham City defenders. And they've gotten away with a couple of tackles today. But they're not getting away with this one. Bonatini, finesse shot. That's a fourth goal. And that should be the win. That is why I bring on Bonatini late in these matches. Whereas we might not need another goal. He just gets it for us. And he contributes more to our game than a defensive substitution. I know we're going to have to score goals. We do it again. Oh, fair play to Birmingham City. That's a well-worked goal. They just pass it around. Now we need to hang on with just three minutes left to play. Pretty much going to go ultra defensive and try to see this one out. Fair play to Birmingham City. They performed like a side trying to get into the top six. But luckily we did just enough to secure the win and three points. Man the match will be going to Benica Fobi with a 9.3. Several 9.2s on the board for Costa as well as Podanes. I wasn't able to update you earlier on what players will be getting player training for this month. And there haven't been too many changes. Hal's still working on his defending. Nevish working on his short passing. Gibbs White working on his long passing. The one change is I did swap out Enabakari for Costa. He'll be working on his short passing. And Podanes still working on his finishing and attacking positioning. Sunderland are doing all right in this career mode, sitting mid-table at 10th. And they have some decent players. So I do want to bring out a strong side. Still waiting for Reading to slip up so we can overtake them. It'll be a standard starting 11 for us in this one. I liked how we were passing the ball around in our previous match. I'm looking to keep that going. Uh, with the players that I have chosen. One change is that I've taken out Jota and brought on Anabakari at the right winger position. I just like how Anabakari has been performing lately. It's tough for him to get play time with Jota being the higher rated player, but considering Jota is the loney, I still want to invest in Anabakari's future. Once again, the 4-2-3-1 seems to be the formation of choice for these championship sides, but if we play anything similar to what we did against Birmingham City, we should be fine. Oh, Anna Bakari showing off the skills, trying to find the player in the middle. That is brilliant. 
a Fobi with the tap in, but Enabakari put in all the work. The decision to start him has absolutely paid off, and we have scored our first goal just seven minutes into the match. And what a goal it was! Good save from Ready. I'm not sure if that was on target, but Ready not taking any chance. We'll take a look at this replay. This camera angle will give us a better look at it. And yeah, I think Ruddy had to make the save. Otherwise, that might have been going top net. Good header won by Vinagre. And now we have Nevish finding Costa on the left. They're playing some quick tempo play style. And Podanes might be through. He'll go with the cross goal effort. McNair putting in the block. And that saved a second goal. We'll see if Podanes can try out his heel to heel flick. Does well to get by a few. Playing in the middle. That's not the player I was looking for. But we're still with it. Cody finding and die. The through ball nearly worked out, but a phobie got in the way of the shot. And it's going to be an offside call. A respectable first half from us. We were dominating possession and for the most part dominating the gameplay and tempo. I still like to get this second goal because you never know what might happen. CPU can get one of those goals off set pieces and I am not going to take a draw from this one. One change at the break, we'll be swapping our strikers, a Phobie coming off and Bonatini being brought on. Set piece chance for us and we're going to try a bit of a tactic. And this is very effective in Ultimate Team. We'll see if it can work out in Karimo. Costa, you timed his run a bit too late. But you guys see what I was trying to do. If that works out and you time it correctly, it's almost a guaranteed goal every single time. Sunderland have not been able to get much of anything going attacking-wise, whereas we just can't seem to get that second goal. Here's Sunderland trying a long ball tactic. We'll win that header and get on the break. This is Vinagre pushing up from his fullback position. A little bit dangerous. He does well to hold off the defender. Podaints. Finding Bonatini and a Bakari. Can he skip by a few more? He's shown some very good strength in past episodes, but this time he'll be unselfish. Finding Podence, the finesse shot will get us the second goal. 69 minutes into the match, and at this point, we're going to think defensively. Make a few substitutions, close out the match, and hopefully keep this clean sheet. Two substitutions left for us, and I will be taking out Nevish because he's the more attacking of our two center defensive mids. We'll bring on Saiz, and then we'll swap Saiz's and Ndaye's position because Saiz is left-footed. Costa also is looking a little bit more tired. He must have fairly low stamina because this seems to be a consistent issue. Luckily, we have options available, and Cavalero will be brought on. Well, I can tell you one thing. Sunderland are looking to get a goal back. Their center backs are certainly not staying back while attacking. But we're doing a great job at getting the ball cleared. And we might be on the break here. Bonatini's the only striker forward. But he did enough to dribble and waste some time. This will probably be the last attack of the match. And if we can get this one cleared, we can hang on to our clean sheet. That should do it. And that will be a 2-0 result. Attacking-wise, I didn't feel as confident as I did in the Birmingham City fixture, but defensively, I felt much better. Sunderland didn't even register a shot on target, and I'll absolutely take that result. Man of the match will be going to Enabakari. He picked up two assists in this one. Really good outing from him and showing why he could potentially be our starting right winger. I know Jutta is the higher-rated player, but Enabakari... We just get results with them. Our second scouting report from Nigeria is in. We'll scroll through and see if we can find any more 94 potential goalkeepers. Adekunde, a 75 to 94. And we've actually been scouting him for a while and his potential must have increased. We'll sign him up, although I'm pretty set that one of the players we have in our academy is already going to be the one that we go with. But we'll give everyone a chance. Uh, Mamawepa, another one, 75 to 94. Pretty good value, so we'll sign him up. And moving on, we'll see if we have any more. That'll do it for this month. A couple of player requests coming in before our match against Sheffield Wednesday, and they're from players that I don't mind featuring. You guys know how I feel about Courtney House. He wants to get the start, or at least get the chance to play, and I think I'm going to grant him one of the starting center back roles. Same thing goes for Prince. We know he can score goals for us, so I'll probably swap him and Nevish, because Nevish is generally the more attacking center defensive mid. This is what the table looks like going into our final fixture, and we finally overtaking Reading for that top spot. That adds a little bit of pressure going into this match against Sheffield Wednesday, especially considering they're in sixth. But this is the kind of pressure that we need to be able to deal with if we want any chance at winning the title. Match scheduling has been in our favor lately. We haven't run into any severe stamina issues, which is always a plus when you're trying to compete for a top spot in the league. But like I mentioned earlier, I will be starting Prince over Nevish at right center defensive mid and House over Bully at left center back. We're also seeing the return of Douglas at left back. He's been injured for a number of weeks and months. And he's finally fully fit, ready to go, and ready to make an impact on this fixture. 
It's refreshing to see a new formation, Sheffield Wednesday optioning for a 4-4-2, which is extremely effective in FIFA 18 and should be tough to deal with. Oh, this could be a chance. Podence has one defender left to beat. He's just going to use his pace and a little bit of dribbling. And Hunt able to stand his ground and put in a tackle. That does show some defensive lapses, though, from Sheffield Wednesday. Their center backs seem to like to push up. And if we can just work the ball around, I'm sure we can get a similar chance, just like this one. We're playing it through. And unfortunately, Ndiaye unable to get to it. Well, it's been an eventful first half, but neither team has really made the most of their chances. We'll get one more opportunity before the halftime break. And Podane's taking on these Sheffield Wednesday defenders. Finding Jutza and just too heavy of a dribble. Looks like we'll be going into the break nil-nil unless the ref lets us play on here. Another interception and there's the halftime whistle. Not too many highlights from the first half. Hopefully that'll change. And this is what I mean. It really was an end-to-end -end first half. Both sides were pressing trying to get the first goal. But zero shots on target. That's just not going to lead to many highlights. 52% possession for us. I don't think there's been a clear better team in this one. Striker substitutions seem to have worked out for us, so I'll be taking a Phoebe off and bringing on Bonatini. Let's we'll see if our 77 rated striker can get us a goal. That was a close one. Probably the best chance so far for Sheffield Wednesday, and for a second, I thought that one went in, but it goes off, off the side netting. And this might be our chance. It's a one-on-one, -on -one and Jolta's taken out, ref. That should be a red card. Knowing this game sometimes, it will be a yellow. And we'll see. The moment of truth, it is a red. That'll obviously have a huge impact on this match. 25 minutes left to play, and Sheffield Wednesday are down to 10 men. We'll try out our tactic again and see if we can make the pass work. I think I timed it correctly, and we'll play this one through. I should have just shot. Bonatini was trying to sweat it over to Podanes, but we do get a corner kick out of it. I'm going to try to make the most out of this one. Podanes, the fake shot, creating some space. We have an open player in Bonatini. I'm going to try and not pass it too many times now. And just get it inside the box. This is... This could be our chance. We have an open player on the far post. And the driven pass seemed to have a ton of swerve on it. I don't know what was going on there. But let's make some substitutions. 20 minutes left. We have some tired wingers. And you guys know who I'm bringing on at the right wing position. It has to be Enabakare, who performed extremely well in his last match. That gives us one extra change, and I think an attacking change would serve us well. I'm going to bring on Cavalero for Costa, because Costa continues to run into stamina issues. I think both teams are going for it. Neither team wants to get a draw on this one, and they are pouring for their attackers. Bannon gets by one of our defenders. Spots out the run in the middle. The shot will be going into the back of the net. What an effort from outside the box. And fair play to Sheffield Wednesday. Still five minutes left in this. I feel like we have an opportunity to get a draw. But going into this match, I didn't want to get a draw in the first place. Every time we have an opportunity to stay at the top of the table, it seems like we bottled those chances. But that replay gives me an idea that Sheffield Wednesday had like no center backs back. This might be one last attack for us. And the ref... Calls full time when it's like a three on one. Horrible decision by the ref in my opinion. Yeah, I know we were closing in on three minutes of added extra time, but let us play on and try to get the draw. Very disappointed to lose this one. Fair play to Sheffield Wednesday though. They were able to get shots on target. We were not, and as a result, we lost this one. Man of the match, I'm assuming it will go to a Sheffield Wednesday player, and it was Venancio with an 8.8 .8 rating. He also scored the goal for them. So that's an incredible effort from outside the box for a center back. Say what you want about it, but uh, we'll move on from there. But guys, that'll bring an end to today's episode of the Wolves Career Mode. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you guys again soon.